Rohit from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to solve the previously asked pseudocode questions for Infosys Drive. This video will help you to prepare for the same. Also, you can join our masterclass training where we are going to cover all the previously asked questions. Do join our social media handles like Telegram, Instagram, WhatsApp, where we constantly provide updates regarding on-campus and off-campus drives. Links to all these handles is provided in the video description. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. In this video, we are going to discuss the pseudocode questions which are previously asked for the Infosys SE role for 2023 batch. As you all know, they have started the hiring process for 2023 batch. And in this particular SE role, they have one section called as pseudocode questions where they are going to ask you the five questions and every question carries two marks equal weightage. These questions are very easy. When you will see the actual questions, you will feel that. But if you have the basic understanding of programming logic, how the program flow happens and the fundamental concepts like looping structures, conditional statements, how the function asked works with the parameters, then easily you can solve these questions. So without wasting much time, let us start with the actual questions. I will give you the brief explanation about the working flow and then we can finalize the answers. So all these are MCQ based questions. Read the first question. Try to predict the output. They have provided us with the pseudocode. So pseudocode is nothing but the actual code. It is not matching with your programming languages, right? Pseudocode is like dummy one, which will give me the idea about the flow of the program, like instructions are there. So we need to assume that instructions are working fine. And based on that, you have to develop the logic flow of the program and then predict the output. So in the first question, they are asking that what will be the expected output for the provided pseudocode? See, they have mentioned here characters A, B, C, D. So all these are nothing but the character type of variables and they are assigning values to this A is equals to a character A, then character B, character C and character D. So this is what assigning the values. After that, they are trying to print this variable values like A plus B plus C plus D. Now easily you can get the idea from this that all these are nothing but the ASCII values. So little bit information about the ASCII knowledge will help you to solve this question easily. So the ASCII value for A, B, C and D and addition of all these ASCII values will be my final result, right? So if you consider the ASCII value for A, that is 97, B, that is 98, C, that is 99 and D, that is 100. And if I add all of them, I will give like this and addition of all this will give me 394 and see the provided option is also there 394 so the correct answer for this is option d so in pseudocode you will not be having that permission to complete this code in actual language and then try to cross check it so the programming logic only how the program flows that will help you to solve these questions and very easy one once you are done with the fundamental things Basic programming knowledge will be sufficient to complete all these questions. So first question answer 394. Second question, see, predict the output of the following code snippet. So code snippet is there. And if you see the while loop is utilized here and the value of I is also given that is one. So if I take the while loop iterations, first condition will be I is one, one is less than six. And inside the loop, they are printing the value of i and i is getting updated by i is equals to i plus 2. So this is my update expression with the help of which every iteration of the loop will change the value of i and it will again go and check the condition. So first i is 1 and 1 is less than 6. When this loop is working because this condition is true, 1 is less than 6. So it will go inside the body of the loop and it will print the value of i, right? So I will write down output in this case, right? So print value of i and that is one here. So my first value output will be one. 
after that i will get updated i is equals to i plus 2 so it will become 1 plus 2 that is 3 right so i has been become 3 and again my loop goes and check the condition so in second iteration now my value becomes 3 so it will check the condition 3 is less than 6 this is also true then again print the value of i and now this time i is 3 so my output will be 3 then again i value modifies current value of i plus 2 that is 3 plus 2 this will give me 5 and again loop will check in third iteration my while loop value i is 5 less than 6 and this is also true again it will print the value of i and this time the value of i is 5 so it will print 5 here then i value will get updated current value of i 5 plus 2 that will become 7 and then again loop iteration will be checked yes the fourth time also loop iteration will be checked but this time the condition will become 7 less than 6 and this is false and my loop will get terminate over here so what output we received 1 3 and 5 so this is basic iteration of while loop and the value of i is printed so if you see the first option 1 3 and 5 is the correct answer so option a is correct here right so basic knowledge of looping iteration will help you to solve this question next question predict the output for provided code snippet now here they have used bitwise operator here bitwise and if you see the concept of operator is utilized here so the question is they have provided with value of a that is 2 so i am having these variables a is equals to 2 b is equals to 5 and the expression is c is equals to a and b so this is bitwise and this is not logical one this is bitwise and we all know that bitwise operator works on the binary bits so first if i convert this 2 to the binary value so i will get 0 0 1 0 then this 5 is again converted to binary value and this will be 0 1 0 1 right and then we have to perform the bitwise and operators and operation on this now as per the truth table of and as you are aware about the truth table of and gate we know that the input parameters can be like this 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and the output for this is in and operation if both the inputs are 1 then only we will get one output otherwise zero now see here zero one is zero one zero is zero zero one is again zero and zero zero is also zero so what binary we get zero 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 and the decimal for this is zero so this value will be assigned to c and c will become zero here so the output is zero option b right in this way you have to solve so if you have the knowledge of bitwise operators and how exactly they work easily you can solve this question as well moving to the next question question number four what will be the output of the provided code snippet if the value of n1 is given as 3 and n2 is given as 12 so variable values they have provided and if you see the code snippet they have used uh, if you see this expression they have used here ternary operator then normal while loop with value 1 that is true and if condition is there in that if condition they are using modulus operator as well as logical and see this is logical and now we know in logical and what happens both the expressions if they are returning true then and then only the conditional result will be true and then they are printing the value of max and stop the process here otherwise if the condition is not true then we will go here we will increment the value of max this is pre increment and then stop it return 0 as the condition is true positive value is provided to the loop so if it breaks then and then only the loop will stop now let us go step by step and check the values what they have assigned to us and for the condition also now in ternary case if you are familiar with this syntax easily you will get an idea that in ternary representation it is a single line representation of if else kind of condition so expression is given here and if the result of this expression is true it will take this first value if it is true otherwise it will take this value if it is false right and this value will be assigned to my max variable now n1 and n2 they have already provided so n1 is equals to 3 n2 is equals to 12 
we will check the value for max max is equals to in bracket n1 that is 3 greater than n2 that is 12 so this is false false means the value of n2 will get assigned to max so now the value of max will become equals to n2 and that is 12 so i got the value for max that is 12 then i will go with the loop iterations while true first condition is if max that is 12 modulus division with n1 that is 3 equals to equals to 0 logical and second expression is 12 modulus division with n2 that is 12 equals to equals to 0 now we have to check whether these two expressions are giving me true results or not if both are true then the condition will be true now if you see 12 modulo 3 equals to equals to 0 this is also true and 12 modulo 12 equals to equals to 0 this is also true so both are giving me true results it means my condition is true and i will go inside the if block and what i am doing here i am printing the value of max what is the current value of max 12 so my output printing will be 12 after that break break means it will terminate the looping instructions so after this termination this much part is in loop now so this entire block will get terminated and we will stop the process so final output that we received will be 12 from here and option a is correctly resembling with the answer so option a is correct answer over here answer 12 right so ternary operator logic then basic if conditional statements looping statements will help you to understand how to go with the flow of the program and easily you can figure out the output here then last question what will be the output of given code for array so they have provided with array elements and the value of n is also given so in such cases to save the time what you can do simply if you analyze the flow whatever they have provided in the pseudo code easily you can figure out the case okay so array is given so if i draw the structure of array as we know the indices we have to use for traversal and these are the elements that they have provided and my indices will be 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 right all these are my index values and if i take the size size or you can also called as length of the array that will be total number of elements there are six so this parameter is six they have mentioned a function here see read one by line by line function start then function body is there in function if you get the idea it is returning an integer value and it accepts two parameters first parameter is an array second parameter is the value of n this value is also provided to us n is equals to 17 then one variable declaration integer result and result value is initialized to 0 then loop is there for loop which starts from 0 to less than length of array and that we have already calculated 6 so this condition will be i less than 6 and update expression i plus plus inside this i am checking one condition that is if a of i the element is equals to equals to n if this condition is true then i will assign the value of i to result means my result variable is getting updated here then break end of if then else condition is also there if this is false then it will go to the else block and i am assigning minus one to my result variable then else complete we will return the value of result whatever it is and then function completes right now go step by step and check for the condition so result is initialized to zero then loop starts i is equals to zero means i am targeting this element i is zero less than 6 so condition is true i will check the condition if a of 0 is equals to equals to n so what is a of 0 1 equals to equals to n what is n 17 so this is false control will go to the else block and what i am doing in else block minus 1 so result will become minus 1 see and block ends we will return the value of result function ends right then value of i if you are going to check for now in normal cases what you can do simply by this logical flow you can directly analyze that all my elements of the array are not going to equals to the value of n and that is what i am checking here so within quick time you can directly figure out the solution that will be minus one right so it will result into minus one and final answer is this b option b it will go with minus one right so in this way you can figure out the cases so if you see all the questions were very easy and they're actually asked questions in the previous rounds 
सो बेसिक प्रोग्रामिंग लॉजिक विल हेल्प यू आई होप यू गेट द प्रॉपर गाइडेंस एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ वट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे आर गोइंग टू आस्क एंड हाउ शुड बी योर प्रिपरेशन स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर दिस थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो टिल द एंड डू सब्सक्राइब अवर सोशल मीडिया हैंडल्स एज वेल एज यूट्यूब चैनल फॉर कॉन्स्टेंट अपडेट्स थैंक यू